and welcome to Andy's Cornish Creations. In this video I'm going to be making a Byron Rollerball kit from Procraft. I'll be using Paduk wood. Here I'm fitting the heel end cap to, um, to the tube. Uh, it needs to be on so that the, uh, the ink refill has something to, uh, to fit against. But it's a little bit wider than the tube. So I'm going to put it in the jaws and uh, turn the brass down until it's the same diameter as the tube. And I'm just going to use a square-ended scraper to turn the brass down. It's quite soft and turns quite easily. And then when I drill the hole in the blank, the whole thing will just slip into the uh, hole uh, with it being all the same diameter. You'll see what I mean when we come to do it. Now I'm just marking the piece of wood and as you can see I'm making it quite a bit longer than the tubes because I'm not going to be putting a pocket clip on. Uh, this is the, uh, the cap end and uh, I'm drilling down uh, 50 millimeters with a 12 mil drill bit. So I'm not drilling down the whole um, length of the piece of timber uh, because I'm not fitting the cap end on. It's just going to be uh, natural wood at the end. So there will be a little piece, there'll be a bit of wood left, uh, left, at, left at the end of the blank. And this is the body of the uh, of the pen, and there I've just marked the uh, the length of the tube plus the heel end, which will all be fitting inside the piece of wood. And remember, when you're withdrawing these. Uh, when you're using a ch chuck, um, make sure you've got your hand on the chuck because uh, it's quite easy for the chuck to pop out of the tailstock, and then you've got a you've got a chuck spinning round, and uh, it could be quite dangerous. So keep you keep keep a hold of it. Just make sure it comes out. I'm just clearing the swarf. So just go in small amounts and then withdraw and back in and clear it. You can see it gets packed in quite hard there. Now I've got it between centres. So it's just the... Uh, so I've got the bushing at one end uh, where the tube is and the other end hasn't got the tube. Uh, it's just wood so I've just got the tail stuck. Um, drive centre to um, to hold the other end. I'm using my 3/8 spindle gouge 
to turn this down. So I'll be turning it down to the bushing at one end and try and get a nice smooth transition down to the bushing. And the other end, basically I could leave it whatever shape or size I wanted to because there's nothing going to be fitted on the other end. It's just going to be uh, um, a blank piece of wood. So, uh, so I don't have to worry about the other end too much but I want to keep the pen fairly slim. And, uh, and bear in mind I've still got to make it square yet so I want to leave, leave a little bit of meat on it because I've got to be able to um, flatten four sides and, uh, and not risk hitting the tube where I flattened it down. Just making it slightly narrower at the, uh, at the end. Here I'm using my one inch skew chisel and I like to use this just to uh, take out any high points and just even that, uh, that cut. And then it's down to sanding. I think I start off at about uh, 120 and uh, I'll not get too carried away with the sand in here because I've, um, I've got to put the flats on yet so I'll take that one off uh, that's the, that was the cap and uh, this is the body of the pen again we've got the bushing at one end and just, uh, just a piece of wood um, just wood at the other end because the tube doesn't go all the way through. So again I'll turn it down nicely with the bushing and just keep it uh, parallel. I've, uh, I've turned the speed up to four times now just to show this bit. It's just a repeat of, uh, of what I did with the uh, cap and uh, just turning the body of the pen to round and then just giving it I'm tapering it slightly to the end that hasn't got the uh, the bushing on just to give it a, a little bit of interest in its shape and better if it tapers down to the end rather than getting thicker at the end I think so uh, just going on with a bit of sandpaper again and here I'm marking um, the piece up into into four equal sort of quarters, and um, and using the tool rest just to get a try and get a straight line across the piece. And then I'll uh, I'll be going on there with the. Um, uh, with the finger electric finger sander to put those flats on just to save time um, but you could uh, you could equally do it uh, with a with a file or uh, or a just an electric orbital sander but uh, being a bit careful not to go down too far uh, again uh, if, you, if you were to go down too far you'd hit the brass tube uh, which would totally ruin it so there just keeping between the lines try and keep it nice and even and a little tool this uh, for, uh, for this kind of application But it does. It does. Uh, it does be quite effective at taking the take the wood off. So I have to be quite uh, quite light uh, uh, with the sanding. Not be too aggressive.
and then uh, go with the grain of the wood with some sandpaper. This is uh, this is 240 grit sandpaper. I'm going with the grain of the wood to take out any scratches that are on there. And also because the, the little bit down at the end where the bushing is 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 round, I'm just going over it to, whilst the lathe's turning. And then I'll sand it down to about 400. see where the purple is starting to come out of the wood that's probably where it's got heated up a bit with the uh, with the sanding but uh, after a after a couple of days it all turns a, a nice uh, a nice purple color uh, and there will be some pictures at the end that show it uh, after a, after a couple of days where it sort of evens out a bit Now I just applied a bit of abrasive paste just to try and get a bit of a, a bit of a shine on there and then I think I, on this one I put some uh, micro crystalline wax on this because as a pen it's going to be handled quite a lot um, it gives it a nice uh, a nice finish and it's a, a, a bit tougher tougher finish so it'll stand up to being used although even if you were to leave it uh, natural I'd, uh, I'd be okay with that as well because uh, uh, I think the feel of the woods really nice and I prefer that to a uh, sort of a CA finish where it basically the surface feels like a piece of plastic and we're sort of going for a more sort of naturalistic uh, look to the whole pen. So same process on this one with the abrasive paste and uh, just give it a rub and then the micro crystalline wax and just give it a buff up. And with this one again you can see the purple starting to show through. Right, here I'm at the bench sander and I'm just going to put an angle on the ends uh, with the ends without the tube uh, just to give it a, a, a bit of character rather than it being square at the ends so I just go on a, a, a sort of a 30 degree angle it doesn't matter and, uh, and then just put a little chamfer around the edge so that it's not sharp bit tricky this because I'm holding the camera with one hand and uh, trying to sand with the other but uh, I, uh, for this little process I didn't want to set the uh, set the camera tripod up and stuff so uh, I'm just doing it like this This is quite a coarse grit, so I will just uh, 
tickle over it with a with a finer bit of sandpaper off camera. They're just trying to keep it nice and square. They're, uh, well, the angle square. Right, I'm fitting it together. There's only one, well, two pieces to fit into the cap. The, the uh, little plastic uh, threaded part and the uh, and the brass brass part that uh, that allows the cap to screw onto the body of the pen. I'm using the <coughs> I'm using the tailstock to push it up. It's a really nice way of doing it. Nice and controlled. And that's it, that's the cap finished. And here's the body of the pen. I'll just move the tailstock back a bit to get it in. So there's just one piece to press into into the body and uh, and that's the the piece that allows the uh, the nib end to uh, to screw in and that's my little tray of bits So the uh, the ink cartridge goes in with the little. Uh, I'm just <laughs> I haven't put one of these together before, so I'm just fathoming fathoming out how it uh, how it all fits. So it's the spring in, then the uh, the cartridge, and then screw the the nib onto the end and then the cap screws onto that and there we go quite simple and uh, yeah very different looking pen uh, without without all the work of having to sort of create the threads uh, of, a, of a sort of standard bespoke uh, pen just lining up the uh, the threads <laughs> there's only there's only one one point where it actually lines lines it uh, lines the pen up which is there and that's it job done so there we have it uh, a bit of a different pen again um, it's one I wanted to try for a while uh, um, a pen without a uh, uh, a, a sort of a um, cap end, uh, or the uh, or the piece on the on the nib end. Um, so uh, so what I used in the end, I used a Procraft. You see it there. A Procraft Byron G um, kit from uh, yeah from Procraft, obviously. And um, and this is the one with the um, with the roller ball, uh, but they also do one with a, um, a fountain pen uh, nib, um, which which I would have actually preferred with it being a, a little bit different and everything. But uh, but it seems to work out. It has got a it's got a three when when you screw it together. There's three different spots that you can that it screws together in and. And if it's on the right one, which it nearly never is, um, it does line up. It does line up nicely. Um, but uh, but yeah, I thought it'd be a bit bit different and a bit different shape. And the fact that it's almost all wood except for the little ring in the middle, uh, that's kind of the thing I was going for. And uh, and I haven't seen anything anywhere um, where you can make a kit up apart from being making a bespoke kit, which is it's a Really different ball game, and it uh, it takes a lot of um, a lot of tools and a, and a lot of practice to be able to do that. But I want to keep it simple and use just a sort of a standard kit. But uh, yeah, I thought it was a little bit different, and it's and it's square, which uh, which is a bit of a change. 
it's made out of purple heart it's not very purple at the moment you see a couple of little patches that are purple where I think it's got uh, hot um, but if it's left out in the Sun it will it will turn purple uh, it's only when it's freshly cut that it's this brown color um, but yeah yeah I thought it was a bit different and, um, and it's just something I wanted to try so I thought I'd uh, film it and put it out there uh, if anybody knows of a kit that you can uh, that, that only has those components because basically I've wasted the um, the clip end and uh, and the other end um, but um, which is um, where are they well there's the clip anyway so you're sort of throw, throwing that away but um, which is a bit of a shame but um, yeah um, if anybody knows of one uh, then let me know if you would because I'd, uh, I'd like to give it a go and uh, yeah I think it makes quite an interesting pen and it's nice to see it without uh, with sort of less uh, metal on and, uh, and just sort of having the wood showing um, but anyway hope you enjoyed it if you did give it that uh, thumbs up um, and uh, share if you can and if you haven't already subscribed if you could sub subscribe that'd be great and um, and leave me a message um, that'd be great as well I, uh, I, I certainly read them all and I reply to them all as soon as I can <laughs> um, so from uh, another dry day here in Cornwall this is uh, Oh, it must be going up for two months, I think. Uh, uh, with ha hardly any rain at all. It's getting very dry. And um, but anyway, from me, Andy Paramore. This is Andy's Cornish Creations. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>